It's time now for County Wide, a presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting News. You'll hear about the interesting issues and happenings that affect all our lives. Here's today's County Wide. Well, good day and welcome to the program. It is County Wide. I'm Brad Miller. We're happy to welcome into studio uh, today uh, Lori Deutsch, is a project manager with something we've been talking about here on KVRD and across our family of radio stations for a few weeks now. Yavapai County's Wrapped in Love Diaper Bank. Did I get that right, Lori? Yes, you did. All Thank right. You. Well, welcome. And uh, I'm so pleased that you came to join us uh, in studio today to talk about this very worthwhile project and really uh, kind of unique. I'm not sure I'm familiar with a different uh, or another effort uh, quite like this, uh, but it's babies. We're talking babies. In yes. springtime, we seem to talk babies. And here as we move through the summertime, we're always uh, talking about babies. And the diaper drive has got to be something that's going to be very, very much appreciated by families across Yavapai County. Talk to me a little bit about what this is and who okay. the beneficiaries are uh, intended to be. Okay. So, well, thank you, Bill. Brad, I'm so sorry. Whatever. Um, well, I <laughs> Just getting don't call me late for dinner. Yeah, okay. It's that old joke. You're fine. Um, so we started... Um, hearing about the need through just a small, what they call diaper pantry. And it was in the Prescott Valley area. And the gal's goal was to work with foster families. Mm -hmm. And between two years, she went from, um, she and her volunteers, because it's all volunteer basis, from distributing over 8,000 diapers to over 20,000. And that huge wow. increase prompted the ask. So prevent child abuse, um, community counts, mat force, uh, first things first we got together and had a conversation of how can we take this um, project and this system, which diaper banks are across the nation and create one for Yavapai County. We okay. know the need is there. This just served the original pantry served a small amount of folks and that was B's closet and we're growing that. Right, right. And so that is where it was launched and it started this spring. So in February and we had a church over um, here in Cottonwood uh, Faith Lutheran joined in the first diaper drive, and we raised about 9,000 diapers. And so that was our basis for inventory. And we've gotten some funding to come in to, to purchase. And since then, we've had um, a Mother's Day diaper drive, and now we're doing the Wrapped in Love okay. um, Christmas in July. So. Talk, talk to me about this. Right, let's do this. Let's mention the website, and we'll do it a couple okay. of times through the program. WrappedInLoveDiaperBank.org? Yes. So folks can look there and find a lot of great information. It's a terrific website. Thank you. Uh, and uh, real comprehensive, and uh, probably get a lot of uh, uh, questions answered uh, as Lori and I continue to chat. But check out the website, WrappedInLoveDiaperBank.org. You mentioned something. You said, we know the need is there. How do you know? So first things first, um, creates um, or does an ass a needs and assets report. Okay. And so in that report, at the very end, you have to look for it, there are sections of our county divided down, and it indicates how many families are in poverty and how many babies are living in poverty. Okay. So in our county, we have over 1,900 babies. So what we're doing is approaching getting the services to those areas based on the programming that's available for the families. 1,900 babies below poverty line? Yes. I would, Living in poverty, yes. I would never, ever have imagined that. Right. Well, our single head of household, we have lots of female and male single head of household. We have grandparents taking care of grandkids. Right. We have kinship families. And then we have the homeless population. All of that feeds into them gathering the statistics. So that's a lot of kiddos living in families where resources are scarce. Wow. And so that is the approach that we're taking. And then we're working with the organizations that serve those families. As you and I kind of talked, we are not a storefront. Yeah. So we have our warehouse in Prescott Valley. We have a place to to put all these great gifts we're giving of diapers and incontinent supplies. From there, we distribute to organizations that are serving the families that have the kiddos or the elderly okay. that are in need of this product. So you're kind so. of building on an existing mechanism yes. to get to uh, to the folks that, that are most uh, in need of these services. Yes. Okay. Well, let's talk about this because I know that sometimes people hear diaper drive and they think, oh, well, it's a financial thing, an alleviation for needy families right. uh, that the diapers will kind of help with cost and, and, and acquisition and things like that. Yes. But isn't it true that... Um, when we start talking about that, you're gonna uh, then you're gonna find maybe a young first time mother who doesn't know how to clean and diaper a baby, yes, or who doesn't understand the importance of well baby visits or can't afford them or has no. 
it, right. it helps us under open up a bigger, uh, potentially bigger uh, issues. Yes. So when we um, look at child development and when we uh, bundle down the diapers, so they, they come in large packages, we bundle down to 25. Within that is wrapped information, including developmental stages oh, okay. and what's needed and okay. the uh, helpline for um, children and just all kinds of, and we can talk about that, but that is what we are hoping builds up for the families are these wraparound services and the care and the availability of help that we have in our community. You know, Yavapai County is well known for sharing resources oh, yeah. across the mountain even mm-hmm. and finding out what is in what's needed for the family. You know, is that first time mom suffering from postpartum depression? Right. High country early intervention is just one agency that can do that assessment and help that then link that mom to other services so that they are not as stressed and blue and and then ending up having, you know, them crying as right. well as the baby. Right. So whether it's linking to services for the child, um, I mentioned high country early intervention. We had one mom who has three boys living with her grandparents and two of them needed um, assessments and they are now getting um, the skills and just the it, it's a whole wraparound service through high country right. early intervention to help them be successful just entering kindergarten. They right. weren't even old enough to go into kindergarten yet. So all of these um, pieces get put in place when we have the mechanisms that um, can work together, our community partners. Right. The diapers are just a way and just like a relief for the mom. Oh, good. I don't have to worry about that. Now they can hear the other messages being delivered about whatever phase they are in you know, whether it's them and postpartum or whether it's a crying baby and they're colicky and what do I do to soothe? Right. Um, so we have lots of little pieces of information that we insert in the diapers so that whatever comes up, they have those resources right at their fingertips. They may, may be finding, they may be handed solutions to problems that they don't realize they even have yet. Yes. You know? Yes. Even and, still today, doesn't postpartum depression, uh, the blue? Yes, baby blues. Baby blues. Uh-huh. I mean, is it? I know we've all heard of that now, and, and but is it still as misunderstood as it was, say, a generation ago? Yes, and and some of it comes from the mom thinks she should know. I'm Bingo. a mom. Right. I shouldn't have I, – I feel this way, but I shouldn't feel this way. Right. And I don't want to tell anybody I'm feeling this way. Bingo. And it just is one of those things that um, isn't often openly discussed. If they're getting regular care from a physician and they're taking the baby in and, and those visits – Oftentimes a physician asks, but right. still sometimes the mom doesn't want to admit and she, oh, it's, it'll pass or whatever. And, you know, our county, we still have a lot of um, transient type folks mm-hmm. or just newcomers where their family support system isn't here. It's right. in another state. Right. And so they don't have that support to help them. And they think they should just buck up and move forward yeah. where we know we you know, there are lots of things out there that can help them and help the family and the baby. And, you know, we know a happy baby means a happy family. So um, that is one of just like the facets that gets addressed through this work. Well, and we know, uh, you know, very uh, there's a stigma to that. And yes. we're just kind of picking one of many, many things, uh, many, many branches that this organization could, uh, can go into right. uh, in helping parents. But I think it's one that we've heard of and we want, we know that sometimes uh, we don't hear about this until there's a terrible act, a terrible tragedy yes. uh, that happens. So uh, I'm, I'm using that one to kind of illustrate the importance of where the diapers kind of are just the... I don't want to say bait because that's not the right word. Right. Certainly it's something that is needed and and those kinds of things, but then it helps the bigger picture and the family overall. Yes. Okay. What a terrific uh, operation that is happening. We've got plenty more to talk about. Again, look at the website as Lori uh, Deutsch and I speak about uh, this, uh, the the Wrapped in Love Diaper Bank. Website is wrappedinlovediaperbank.org. Take a listen, find out how you might be able to be a part of this, either through your resources, uh, volunteerism. We haven't talked about that. Perhaps we can. Uh, Or if you yourself are a young mother, a young family that can use these services. It's a terrific program. We'll talk more on Countywide right after this. Life changes, then it changes again. Predicting the unexpected in life is impossible. That's why it's called unexpected. So when it comes to financial goals, our philosophy is don't predict, prepare. 
Hi, I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Matthias Sandoval. A job loss, change in health, or a loss of a loved one can have a big impact on your family's financial security. Let's work together to help make sure you're equipped for life's unexpected events. Call our office to schedule a face-to-face appointment. Edward Jones, making sense of investing. Member SIPC. Verde Solaire, your hometown heating, air conditioning, and plumbing company in the Verde Valley. And your trusted North Central Arizona Goodman dealer. Goodman is a name you can trust with the revolutionary Comfort Bridge technology factory installed into select Goodman gas furnaces and air handlers to ensure the entire system operates at peak energy efficient performance. Verde Solar offers free in home estimates, locally owned and operated since 1983. Visit them at VerdeSolar.com. Better, cleaner, faster. Hi, this is Lewis Rice with Rice Accounting Jackson Hewitt Tax Service with a very sincere thank you for your continued business over the last 20 years. All of us at Jackson Hewitt Tax Service are very honored for the many community awards we've been given over the years. As always, we are open year-round, providing services for taxes, payroll, and bookkeeping. Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, located throughout northern Arizona, can help you with all your tax and accounting needs. For our nearest location, call 800-234-1040. Let's talk. That's the message from John Randall Murdoch, your local Farm Bureau agent providing a personal touch when making insurance and financial decisions. John will simplify your insurance needs while offering competitive pricing. Let's talk auto, home, life, and farm. Call John at Farm Bureau today at 928-649-8686, your Cottonwood Farm Bureau property and casualty insurance company. At Farm Bureau, they insure more than just farms. We welcome you back to Countywide. I'm Brad Miller, and uh, joining me today, uh, Lori Deutsch, uh, project manager, the uh, Yavapai County Wrapped in Love Diaper Bank. And go there, uh, wrappedinlovediaperbank.org, a terrific uh, website. Included there, uh, Lori, is kind of a list. We're talking about diapers, and that's kind of the key. But I think, okay, I can remember back when I had kids. It's longer and longer ago. Uh, But uh, there's uh, diapers, but there's baby wipes. Yes. And there's, you know, all of those different kinds of things. I'm I, I'm assuming that those are also part of what you're offering through this program. Yes. So when we package for the families, so these families, again, are engaged through organizations, um, Catholic Charities, um, High Country Early Intervention, uh, DCS, etc. Mm-hmm. So when they work with their families, they let us know um, each month at the end of the month, we'll be taking orders next month on what needs to be filled. We primarily provide the diaper bundle um, uh, wipes that go with that. And then if they're in need of the diaper cream, we include those. So that is now going automated. So within the next two months, we'll have that. But what we have going on now with the Christmas in July diaper drive is we have wish lists. So on the website, there's um, a little flyer and it has uh, codes, QR codes, that you can, if they want to do something different, um, provide other items. So we also give out um, baby bins for children in need or those moving to a new home. And we need everything for them from bottles to um, blankets to T-shirts to a soft cuddly blanket, something that is a kind of a stress relief right, right, for right. them. So we have those listed. Right. And then we also have blankets for our fire departments. So the Christmas in July, we have boxes at many of our local fire departments and some of them are in need of blankets, the fleece blankets, to have in their engines if they come upon a an incident where there's right. a child. Okay. And they need to give them a comfort, and they said the child size blankets are on there. So we have a long list, and we if it's something that ends up um, where we have an overabundance, and we make sure it goes to maybe a home visiting program or someone working with a kiddo okay. that may be in need. They'll get used. Yes, they okay. get used. Yeah. So many, as you list, and I look at the list on the website, so many things that you just don't kind of think about, even right. if you're a parent, maybe it's yes. been a while since you've had little ones. Yes. Um, is there, I know some some folks uh, will generously just kind of donate financial resources and, 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 and leave it at that. <laughs> Others do choose to go out and actually buy product. Is there yes. a size? Um, of baby diapers specifically that you need more than another size? Or? Yeah, right now, size four, five, six, and um, the larger T's, like 3T, 4T, 5T, 6T, okay. are in need. We're building up that supply at the warehouse. Okay. So that's what's on the, the flyer that we um, put out into the community. But if they have anything, even open packages, put them in a grocery bag, tape them up and drop them off because oh. we rebundle down okay. um, to, we distribute bundles of 25 with the younger sizes getting two bundles and the older ones getting one. Um, it's statistically shown that 
50 diapers a month is ultimately what will help a family okay. so that they're less stressed about providing diapers and they can concentrate on on making rent, make, getting food, all of that. Right. So that's eventually what we want to work up to. But um, anything you know in the diaper families we take, um, it's just that we're focusing on those for this diaper drive. Yeah. Well, you brought in a, kind of a, a couple of statistics. I think these are on the website as well. Babies require up to 12 diapers a day in case you've forgotten, grandma and grandpa. Toddlers about eight, one in three families struggle with diaper needs uh, in Yavapai County. Yes. Uh, locally, the people and families, the kids and families that are going to be served. Parents and caregivers who do not have enough diapers uh, often cannot drop their children off at daycare. Yes. Or child care. So you, here again, we start to think how one, it's just that domino effect that so often happy, uh, happens uh, right. uh, in communities that are served by organizations like yours. Yes. And it's just, and it's something that we... Um, kind of put on the back burner um, because we're like, well, you had that child. You should be able to do diapers. Well, we know that, you know, accidents do happen mm-hmm. and the best laid plans. And then all of a sudden you realize that rent it has gone up again. Right. And in our area, we know how expensive rent is. Oh, yeah. And now um, food, our food is higher. And right. they're saying that this, you know, recession type feeling is not going to go f- away for a while. Right. So when people who are on limited incomes look at what they need you know, food and shelter come usually before diapers. Right. And, you know, we hate to think think about it, but there are a lot of families struggling. They've had to rinse out, you know, um, the diaper and let it dry and reuse it again. And yeah. that is just not sanitary. Right. And so our goal is to help those families get some reprieve in our society. And it's not that it's going to, that we're filling the diaper need for the full month. You know, this is just that little bit of help yeah. and so that they can concentrate on the, the next thing for the child. Uh, 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 a hand up, not a handout. Yes, old, a hand up. Old, old saying yep. goes. Talk to me a little bit. We're talking about resources and donations and things like that. Um, uh, we always find that there are listeners in the audience who may uh, be able to volunteer their time. Yes. Do you need folks in some of these uh, positions? Yes. So, um, well, and there's several things that... Um, you know, just the promotion or even hosting a um, luncheon and have okay. a diaper drive luncheon and okay. and help with product that way. The more product that we bring on, the more babies we can serve. So right, right. now we're building up our inventory. The other part is the bundling down. So we take the um, the bundles, the big boxes, let's say we get, yeah. uh, we break them down. You're, you're into, talking about like, a, let's call it a small lowercase care package. Yes. Of the baby stuff. Yep. Yeah. And so in doing that, it's Saran Wrap. And so uh-huh. 1AZ Credit Union helped host the um, Mother's Day and then they wrapped diapers. Okay. So they have wrapped over 6,000 diapers <laughs> into bundles <laughs> and they created messages. And so we wrap little cards. Okay. So along with information pieces, we have just that um, you know, you can do it type yeah. message that goes to the family. And then they also include information about 1AZ because we're also hoping financially these families will go, wow, I have some relief and I can go start a savings account. Right. And, you know, just financially, what else can I think about? The other, our biggest fun story is the Baghdad Peer Assisted Leadership Group raised $700, wrapped uh collected 1,800 diapers, and wrapped 1,000 diapers, and all of that uh, came about in May. So they're a group of high schoolers in Baghdad that took this project on, and they come up, they'll probably come up twice a year to come to the warehouse, which is in Prescott Valley, and help us wrap diapers. So they put on music and wrapped away, and they drew pictures on little <laughs> cards, and they wrapped them in the diapers, and it was a great, great time. It's so terrific when you hear about that, because probably a week or two weeks earlier, those young people had no idea they were going to be doing that on that day. Yes. Someone heard about this effort and just said, hey, we can help out. Yes. And that's how volunteerism works. Right. It starts, right. you know, we talk about grassroots, and that's where it starts. You yes. find out about a need in the community, and then you try to fulfill it as, uh, as best you can. I want to talk. Let's take another short break, Lori. And when we come back, um, let's just kind of mention here again, it's all on the website. So that's the best place to go uh, for like drop off locations and yes. availabilities and, and, and things like that. So uh, that's really covered well. Uh, but when we come back, we'll talk just a little bit about that. So we, uh, I don't want to leave anybody with any questions after okay. they hear the show today. Perfect. So we'll pause. We'll come back. Uh, Lori Deutsch is our guest, Lori's project manager. Yavapai County's Wrapped in Love Diaper Bank. And look at wrappedinlovediaperbank.org for a lot of great information, including the stuff we've been talking about and that we'll chat about when we come back to Countywide right after this. 
Life changes, then it changes again. Predicting the unexpected in life is impossible. That's why it's called unexpected. So when it comes to financial goals, our philosophy is don't predict, prepare. Hi, I'm Edward Jones Financial Advisor, Matthias Sandoval. A job loss, change in health, or a loss of a loved one can have a big impact on your family's financial security. Let's work together to help make sure you're equipped for life's unexpected events. Call our office to schedule a face-to-face appointment. Edward Jones, Making Sense of Investing, member SIPC. Verde Solaire, your hometown heating, air conditioning, and plumbing company in the Verde Valley. And your trusted North Central Arizona Goodman dealer. Goodman is a name you can trust with the revolutionary Comfort Bridge technology factory installed into select Goodman gas furnaces and air handlers to ensure the entire system operates at peak energy efficient performance. Verde Solar offers free in home estimates, locally owned and operated since 1983. Visit them at VerdeSolar.com. Better, cleaner, faster. Hi, this is Lewis Rice with Rice Accounting Jackson Hewitt Tax Service with a very sincere thank you for your continued business over the last 20 years. All of us at Jackson Hewitt Tax Service are very honored for the many community awards we've been given over the years. As always, we are open year-round providing services for taxes, payroll, and bookkeeping. Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, located throughout northern Arizona, can help you with all your tax and accounting needs. For our nearest location, call 800-234-1040. Let's talk. That's the message from John Randall Murdoch, your local Farm Bureau agent providing a personal touch when making insurance and financial decisions. John will simplify your insurance needs while offering competitive pricing. Let's talk auto, home, life, and farm. Call John at Farm Bureau today at 928-649-8686. Your Cottonwood Farm Bureau property and casualty insurance company. At Farm Bureau, they insure more than just farms. We welcome you back to the program. Again, it's countywide. I'm Brad Miller, and I apologize for a scratchy voice here today, the allergy thing. But uh, sounding very, very good on the microphone today has been project manager uh, Lori Deutsch, wrappedinlovediaperbank.org. Take a look at that, the diaper bank uh, continuing Christmas in July, trying to get diapers and baby uh, things, powders and uh, needs, needs, (laughs) all the things that uh, uh, babies and young families, uh, new baby families uh, are going to need in Yavapai County. And you said at the top of the show, some 1,900 families uh, affected like that. That's a staggering number to me. I would have said 400. Right. Just for no other reason. So all the more important to become uh, kind of part of this. You mentioned the kids uh, in in Baghdad kind of getting involved. Yes. Uh, A lot of times other groups or organizations that might be able to help in a similar fashion to what they did uh, will will come to us and reach out. Do you have a, uh, can you welcome them in? Yes. Be part of this. Yes, I would gladly. So thank you for anybody kind of thinking about what they might want to do to get involved with community from a, a perspective of helping babies. Mm-hmm. I mean, what a, what better way? But right. um, we'll be continuing to build on the website how to have an event, whether it's a diaper shower and okay. you just want to have a luncheon and you have the ladies bring the diapers and then you let us know and we'll drop by and pick them up. Or for the kids at the high school, they had penny wars. And so they created these jars where the kids collect pennies and you can actually put a dime in another classroom's jar and then it subtracts pennies and it becomes a competition internally. <laughs> okay, right. Yes. I've heard of this. Yeah. And okay. so the kids raised a great amount. If you have a National Honor Society and they want a project to do, you know, maybe they want to come by the warehouse and, and wrap diapers. I usually give some background information about why this is a need for mm-hmm. our community. You bet. And then there are other um, agencies, for instance, Sacred Heart Church in Prescott will host just a weekend. That's countywide. And we'll see you next time. This has been Countywide. Listen in each Tuesday and Thursday at this time. If you have a topic or guest idea that you'd like to suggest, email us, news at myradioplace.com.